Once again, we're seeing US and European stock indices on the back foot as they start the new week. Want to know more? Keep watching. Hello, I'm David and this is Trading Today. On Friday, the Dow ended the session down 0.9%, the S&P was down 1.3% and the Nasdaq led the selling down 1.5%. It was the end of the worst week in a month and the selling continued this morning. However, we have seen a bit of a pickup off the worst levels, so things aren't looking too awful, uh, as awful as they were first thing this morning, but nevertheless, we are seeing weakness across all the major indices. Now, there are obviously a number of things playing into this. We have seen a consistent sell-off for the last 10 days or so. There are concerns about the dreadful hostilities over in Israel and Gaza and the, the likelihood that there's going to be escalation and maybe even spilling out wider into the Middle East. So that is one of the concerns. We also are seeing an incredible sell-off in the bond market, particularly in US Treasuries. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note, which is a key indicator, has once again topped 5% this morning, equaling its record high from 16 years ago, back in the summer of 2007. Now that's really a concern because 5% return you'd have thought would be quite enough to encourage buyers of bonds to come in. But unfortunately, we have a huge supply of an overhang of Treasuries in the market and there are real concerns about the US debt, well over 33 trillion and being added to every single day and no real political will to do anything about it. Remember, the House is still without a speaker and they're going to have to raise the debt ceiling uh, in the middle of November. So this is all playing into uh, bond weakness. Now, Jerome Powell and the Federal's Federal Reserve's response to all this, remember he spoke last week and he pointed out that inflation is still far too high and he's prepared to push interest rates further up to deal with it. They still, uh, he's still uh, reminding us that the Federal Reserve has a 2% inflation target as measured by core PCE and we'll get the latest update on that at the end of this week. We're also going to hear from, uh, uh, we're going to get the latest update on advanced GDP. Now this is another thing that, Fred, uh, that Jerome Powell was talking about. He said the, the, the US economy is exceptionally strong at the moment as this GDP number, because it's expected to come out anything like between plus 3.5% and plus 4.2%. That's despite raising interest rates by 525 basis points since last March. And at the same time, there's this incredible tightness in the labour market. So no increase in unemployment, which you would expect when you're putting on the brakes, when you're putting the brakes on the economy to the, the degree that the US Federal Reserve is at the moment. So let's keep an eye on the data because we know the Federal Reserve is going to be data dependent. And also, of course, we've got the third quarter earnings season where, uh, you know, we, we've clicked up a gear this week. We have got four constituents of the Magnificent Seven. That is those seven stocks which have done so much to drive the gains in the first half of this year. And this week we are going to hear from Alphabet, Amazon, Microsoft and Meta Platforms. So keep an eye out for those because they are important. We've got some other biggies today, uh, th this week as well, like the, the likes of Intel, Chevron, Exxon, Mobil, General Motors. So it's, it's an important week all round. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this of interest. If you did, please like and follow. And best of luck with your trading. Goodbye.